those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength, and they shall. Well, welcome to the Eagles tonight. I hope you're ready because I am. Glory be to God. And we're ready for greater things. Isn't that right? You know, the Lord's been speaking to us about those greater things from Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, that we're going to see greater things things than we've been seeing. And so, you know, it's so important right now that we continue to press in in prayer, press in in our devotions in the word and stay close to our Lord, to our Savior and to our King in Jesus name. You know, in Romans 12, it it, it says in be constant in prayer. In Romans 12 and in the Passion Bible, it says, be enthusiastic to serve the Lord, keeping your passion towards him, boiling hot. Glory to God. I love that. Radiant with the glow of the Holy Spirit and let him fill you with excitement as you serve him. Let this hope burst forth in you, releasing a constant joy. Don't give up in a time of trouble, but commune with God and pray at all times. So it's really important that we're pressing into God, especially in these times that we're living. And he wants us to be close to him. He wants us to be sensitive to his voice and to what he's speaking at this time, whether it's for our nation, our states, our family, our churches, but he wants us to be able to hear his voice and to be sensitive to him. And we know, don't we, that prayer changes things. I think the greatest one it changes is us because I find that the closer I walk with him, the more closer I want to be with him. The more I can hear him in his word, the more I want to hear him in his word. It it just builds something on the inside of, of you. And we thank him for the power of the Holy Spirit. So we say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this meeting tonight. You are most welcome in this meeting tonight. We thank you for helping us to hear what we need to hear, to see what we need to see. And Holy Spirit, thank you for helping us as we bring forth in prayer God's thoughts into the earth in Jesus' name. So welcome tonight to the Eagles and thank you again for joining us from different parts of the world, different parts of Australia and here in our own state, Victoria and the city of Melbourne. So welcome tonight. You know, I love to share this with you because it continually stares my heart. I know I share it a lot, but I feel like I wanted you to hear it again tonight. Billy Graham said, we have not yet learned that we are more powerful on our knees than behind the most powerful weapons that can ever be developed. I mean, that's some statement that he made by the Holy Ghost. And we do need to learn that because I think when we go through things in our lives, as we all do, we live in the earth. So there's going to be times when we face things that we need to learn that. You know, God says, call on me 
and I'll show you great and mighty things. And so when we call on him, he begins to reveal things into our heart and into our lives. And something I think in our churches that the Lord has really put into our hearts is what the Lord Jesus spoke to Nathaniel when he said, you're going to see greater things than these. And so we've got our focus on that in our prayer, in our confession, in our times. We're believing to see those greater things. And my goodness, I wanted to share with you, we've seen some of those greater things last night in the healing meeting. You know, we had the healing meeting online, online, praise the Lord. And then we had a live healing meeting at Raymond Doncaster. Oh my goodness. You know, we had people that were delivered. Uh, God healed people and touched their lives. A lady, I wanted to share it with you to encourage you. A lady came out out for prayer and she said that she'd had pain every time she walked and I know just as we laid hands on her she was swaying as we prayed and she told me when you put your hand on my back and I hadn't even told you that I had pain in my back the minute you touched me my back was released of all pain glory 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 to God then she said all pain left her body she said it was painful to walk out for prayer it was painful to stand and all that pain uh, left her body and so I took her arm and we began to walk up and down the altar and she said that every bit of pain had left her in fact there was a big smile on her face and just before we left the meeting last night to come home she bent right down and touched her toes and she said that is a miracle God is a miracle working God and he did it's something wonderful in her last night you know a lady that um, a lady we watched as God delivered her from grief delivered her from things in her life you could see it on her face even at the end of the meeting she was glowing God had really touched her and it, whatever was there had came off her completely. You know, the Lord is good, isn't he? And his mercy and do us forever. Another person came in and when they came out to the altar, they said they'd been dealing with fear and they felt surrounded by it. It felt like it was on every front in their lives. Well, we prayed and I'm telling you, you could see the fear. You could see it lift off this person and they were a different person when they left that meeting last night. You know, we're so blessed and we put such a priority in, on prayer in our church. And I'm not saying any other church doesn't, I'm just saying we do. But we have ladies that come in for this healing meeting and they walk up and down the altar where we're going to be ministering the word of God, where we're going to be praying for people. I think they come in maybe an hour earlier and they start walking up and down that altar, praying over the people, praying over the service, praying that God's word will have free course in people's lives. And they're praying over that altar. I went in last Last night, you know, when they they felt obviously they were barefoot, walking up and down that altar and praying. And then we have praise and worship people that come in early and they begin to set up, but they begin from that set up long before the service starts, they start praising God. And they begin, there's a change in the atmosphere. Everything, every part of that jigsaw, every piece for that service was in place for last night. The praying, the praise, the worship, the ministry of the word. And then God moved mightily by his spirit. And no one could deny that. Glory be to God. And you know, the atmosphere was charged. And what we found we've been doing at the healing meeting is we have the the lady on the keyboard and a couple of singers that's what we have for the healing meeting. they start praying and praise it. And we just encourage everyone, just come out and stand around the keyboard. And we stand there for a while. 
and we begin to praise God. We begin to worship him. We lift our hands. We let go of everything of the day. We've come into our secret place. We've closed the door to everything outside and we all begin to worship him. And we know when it's time then to sit down and begin to receive his word. Glory to God. It was such a powerful night. I tell you, I think I was drunk in the spirit, even in praise and worship. I was being touched mightily by the power of God. So I'm so grateful for all the different parts in the body of Christ that we all work effectively together so that his plan can be fulfilled in every service that we do. And every part is important. You know, the Bible talks about that, doesn't it? It says there's some seen parts and there's parts that are not so seen. But every part is vital to what God wants to do in a service. And we so appreciate all those parts. The ministry helps that come around the people and encourage the people. Do you know the anointing was so strong in that place last night that no one left when that minute, but when it's not finished. In fact, we found them all down the back with cups of coffee. They were just wanting to rehearse and go over all that the Lord had done. My goodness, our God is such a good God and his mercy endures forever. I want you to go to Luke chapter 11. I felt the Lord touch my heart with this for us tonight and to stir us up by way of remembrance. And that's what he does. Peter said, as long as I'm in this tent, I'm going to stir you up by way of remembrance. So that's what we're going to do tonight, to stir up our faith and get excited about praying. You know, because every circumstance and situation in life designed by the enemy is to draw us out, you know, because he knows how effective our prayer is. So he'll do everything he can to draw you out of prayer, to draw you out of spending time in the Word of God. So Luke 11 and verse 1 says, and he, speaking about Jesus, was praying in a certain place. Do you have a certain place for praying? I do. I have a certain place for praying, and it's my place. And I know it, you know, and it's exciting. And it says, and he, he stopped and one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Teach us to pray. The reason they asked him, you know, I've shared that a lot of times with people. The reason that they asked him to teach him is because they seen how effective Jesus' prayer life was. So they said, teach us to be effective in our prayer life and receiving from God. Go to Luke chapter 18 now and we'll look at verse 1 there as well. And it says also Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought to always to pray and not turn coward, not faint, not lose heart and not give up. Don't give up on your prayer. Hallelujah. We've, we need to develop it as a lifestyle. It's part of what we do every single day. And he says, don't faint, don't lose heart, don't give up. Just because you don't see things happening right now. You know, uh, in our praise and worship last night, they sang the way maker even when you don't see it he's working even when you don't feel it he's working so we don't go by those things we know that our prayer as we pray in faith is having an effect in Jesus name glory to God so we've got to develop that and not faint not lose heart not give up because we may not be seeing something at this time no our prayer is having an effect and we've got to stay with it until we see the 
whole thing come to pass in our life. In the Passion Bible, it says, keep praying. Don't stop. Don't lose hope. Sometimes we feel like things may be taking so long that people tend to take a step back and they get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. Your prayer is very effective and the devil knows it. So that's why he tries to discourage us. That's why he tries to pull us back from those times because he knows that your prayer is effective. You know, in Psalm 109, David said this, I give myself to prayer. Oh, we give ourselves to prayer. And you know, our prayer has a great influence. And the disciples knew that because they'd seen the influence of Jesus' prayer. They seen the effectiveness of Jesus' prayer life as he went out and he ministered to the multitudes of people. And that's why they asked him, teach us to pray. They'd seen the miracles. They'd seen the healings. They'd seen the heavens begin to open. And then in Luke chapter 3, let's go there. Sorry, Luke Luke 3.21. We're really in the book of Luke tonight. Luke 23 and verse 21. Luke 3. Oh, yeah. And then he was praying and the heavens opened. He was praying and the heavens opened. My goodness, they opened for the moves of God. You know, let's go now to, to James chapter 5. James chapter 5. We're moving through the Bible a little bit tonight, hey? Glory to God. We're getting that word into us, that word that is alive and active and energizing and effective and sharper than a surgeon's knife. That word is having an effect inside of us and it can affect and, and help our prayer life it, to be effective in everything that we do. In James 5.13, listen to what he says. If anyone amongst you is afflicted, ill-treated, suffering, E evil, he should pray. He should pray. Glory be to God. So he wants us, even if we're facing difficulties, trials and circumstances and situations in our life, encourage people to pray. You know, if you're going through a trial yourself, if you, you need to crank up your prayer life, glory be to God. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because it strengthens our spirit. And the Bible says the strong spirit of a man will sustain him through bodily pain and trouble and it will stop the devil and his schemes against you and it will open up the plan and ability of God right into that situation right into that circumstance that's confronting you so we need to lift up our voice we need to be persistent prayers can you say that to be a persistent prayer that's not going to quit and then in verse 16 of James 5 in the second part of it it says the earnest heartfelt continued prayer now they're very important words sometimes we glean over certain words but this is how our prayer needs to be heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man or woman it makes it makes tremendous power available that is dynamic in its working. One translation says tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a righteous person. Glory to God. So your prayers are having an effect, church. So don't pull back. Don't faint. Don't grow weary in the name of Jesus. It's a, it exerts. Your prayer is exerting a mighty influence. Another one, it says it's very powerfully productive is the prayer of the righteous. Another one says it has great power and wonderful results. It secures. Another one says it secures great blessings from God. Glory be to God. We press in. We press on. And like that song, The Waymaker, even when we don't see it, even when we don't 
feel it. God is working in the midst of our situation, in the midst of that circumstance. He is working around that child. And the devil will tell you nothing's changing, but I'm telling you that your prayer is having a dynamic effect. And the devil wouldn't even come and tell you those things if your word wasn't challenging his work around their life. Glory to God. And remember, when we pray, we use our faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. We believe and our prayer secures the great blessings of God. And we believe that our prayer is having a mighty influence. Do you believe that tonight? I do. A mighty influence over our lives, over our future, over our families, over our churches. Oh my goodness, when you begin to pray for your church. I mean, I'm so grateful for people that will go in an hour earlier. We see that in our pre-service prayer of the morning, the pre-service prayer at night. People come in an hour earlier to get into that prayer room and start praying because we want God's will in our services. We want to see the power of God. We want to see the greater things of God. We want to see the lost saved, the sick healed, and the dead raised to life for his glory in Jesus' name. So I'm very thankful for people that come in and pray. I'm very thankful for a praise and worship team that come in so early to set up and begin to pray. They play before the service starts and we begin, the atmosphere begins to change and it's ready, it's building something ready for the word to come forth, for the move of God in that service to be effective in people's lives. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you for all the parts that you've got in the body of Christ, how important they are to your plan in every meeting and in every service. And I believe, church, that big things, greater things are on the way. We believe in that in our church. Ephesians 3.20, that our God is doing exceedingly, abundantly, far over and above all that we could ever think or ask according to his power that's working in Jesus' name. Verse 17 and 18 says this, it says, Elijah was human being with a nature such as we have, with feelings, affections like ours. And he prayed earnestly for it not to rain and no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months. And then he prayed again and the heaven supplied rain and it began to produce its crops as normal. You know, when we begin to pray and we pray for those rains of the spirit to come down in our service, you know, even after we, we preach, I pray, Father, those seeds that have gone into people's hearts in our service, we pray for the rains of the Spirit to come on them, that that seed has every opportunity to open, to release, to set down roots and be productive in that person's life in Jesus' name. He prayed. And he prayed that he prayed and and you know the key to the rain coming to the earth to bring fruit is having that rains of the spirit. You know, in 1 Kings chapter 18 and 1 Kings chapter 19, God told Elijah it was time for the rain. So he began to pray with the word of God in his heart. And he was persistent about that. God had spoken to him. He believed those rains are coming. And I tell you, I believe we're going to see greater things because God has highlighted Ephesians 3.20 to us. And and he began to pray and he kept sending his servant up to see what was happening. And the servant came back each time saying, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. And sometimes people pray and they look at their child or they look at that situation and they think they could think, well, nothing's happening, pastor. I'm telling you right now, if you are praying, something is happening and we've got to stay with it. We've got to stay persistent with it because that breakthrough, that turnaround is coming in Jesus' name, just like that rain came. Glory to God. 
It's sometimes, you know, you've got to stay with it and not let go because the devil will try to convince you. He tries to convince us all, all of us. He'll try and convince us that our prayer is having no effect in church. It's an absolute lie. He wouldn't even tell you that if your prayer wasn't having an effect. Elijah said, well, I'm not quitting. What about you tonight? What about me? I'm not quitting. Glory to God. I know if you've, got, he said, I know I got a word from God. I don't care what it looks like. Go back up and have a look because the devil's always trying to stop our prayer life and our word life. And God said, the rain is coming. So Elijah was staying with it until that rain, that harvest, that breakthrough, that turnaround came. And that's what we do. We stay with it until that breakthrough, till that turnaround, until that harvest starts. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And then finally, his servant came back to Elijah and he said, well, I see a cloud, a little cloud, the size of a man's hand. And Elijah said, that's it. We've got it. That's it. I believe that you better run because the rain is coming. Hallelujah. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous person avails. You've got to get that in your heart. It avails. My prayer is availing. What does avail mean? It's producing. It has a benefit and an aid, an aid somebody's life. Glory be to God. And David said, I will give myself to prayer. I will give myself to prayer. And it's so important that we pray. Oh, Father, what an absolute blessing that we get to enter, enter your courtrooms. What a blessing to be able to call on you and you answer us, you be with us. I believe that, that you're with us, that you deliver the situations, the circumstances. You deliver those around our lives as we begin to call on you. You said, Father, in your word, that if we called on you, you'd answer us and you'd show us great and mighty things. And we've got our faith out for that in the name of Jesus. You know, Susan Wesley, and I'm sure I heard Billy Brim share this and I've jotted it down. You know, she said, it, it, um, it was Billy Brim. She said, Susan Wesley, she was the mother of a lot of children. I think I heard her say 19. Now I could be wrong. So we could just say a lot of children. But she put her prayer first in her house every day. Of course, with a lot of children, she didn't have anywhere in the house to go. So she would just lift up her apron each day over her head and she would pray for an hour every single day. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. She did that every day. And church, what did her prayer produce? Two of the greatest preachers, John and Charles Wesley. And I'm quite sure on all those other ch children she had, they it had such a wonderful power in their lives. Glory to God. As we give ourselves to prayer. Oh, Father, we thank you for our children. We thank you for our grandchildren. Oh, Father, we thank you for moving in their hearts, moving in their lives in Jesus' name. That, Father, to their own generation, they're going to carry faith in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would put all the right people around their lives, people that will encourage them and inspire them, and that you would use our children, that you would use our grandchildren to be encouragers of others, to be inspiring other people's lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for our children. Thank you as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you that your word is working mightily. Your promise is working mightily and prevailing in our children's lives, in our grandchildren 
grandchildren's lives and in the generations that follow us. Oh, Father, we believe that in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. You know, instead of fretting over your children, instead of worrying over your children, if we give ourselves to the promise of God and begin to pray. And I never forget Jeannie Wilkinson's prophecy that's in Billy Brim's book, The Blood and the Glory. She wrote it in there. And she said, tell parents, they don't need to worry over their children. If I have to wrestle with them, they will serve God. They will come into the kingdom of God. And I believe that with all my heart, that all our children, you know, you may be standing for your child or children tonight. You may be standing for grandchildren. You may be standing for family members tonight. But I'm telling you, each one, God is going to work in their hearts. That's why it's so important that you pray. Remember, I, I shared this with you. I heard a minister say it, and it so touched my heart that I took it. He said, if you don't pray for your family, who will? And you know it's true about your church. If you don't pray for your church, if you don't pray for your pastors, who will? Glory to God. And we need to be, like David said, I give myself to prayer. We need to be giving ourselves to pray. It's so important so God can start to move and start to turn things around in Jesus' name. You know, we sometimes, you know, we can go into church and we may not like this, may not like that. But instead of complaining, start praying. Start pressing in with that man or woman of God to see that things change, to see God add into their churches, to see supernaturally things happening, the lost being saved, the sick being healed for the glory of God. Stand with your church. Stand with your pastor in prayer. Fast for your pastor. Fast for your prayer. You know, we're doing that. We've got a group of leaders right Right now, we're fasting a meal every single day and we're fasting for our children's church. We're fasting for growth in our children's church. We're fasting for our churches and we're doing that every single day for the whole month of August. Glory to God. And we believe from Isaiah 58 in the fast that God has chosen that it will undo the heavy burdens. It will let the oppressed go free. It will break Break every enslaving yoke. Oh, Father, that healing will spring forth speedily. We believe that and that the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And so we're fasting together for those things. So instead of fretting, instead of worrying over your children, give yourself to pray the promises over them and then begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I remember one... Uh, um, uh, um, prophet, he said that God showed him if he gave himself 15 minutes every day to pray over his children, to pray that. And he said when he began to do that, things began to change in their lives. And he, he prayed, he said this specifically, I prayed 15 minutes every day in the spirit over them and things began to change. Well, find out what it is that God wants you to do over your children and then give yourself to it. Hallelujah. And we bring that reign of God over their lives. And we're going to see amazing things begin to happen. And believe that. Go into prayer, praying for your church, praying for your pastor, praying for your nation, praying for your children. Father, we believe in this scripture. We're going into prayer in it, Father, that we're believing that you're doing exceedingly, uh, abundantly, far over and above all that we could ever ask or think according to your power that's working in us, on us, around us for the glory of God. 
blood in Jesus name we believe that you said to Nathaniel you're going to see greater things we believe we're going to see greater things in Jesus name hallelujah you know the most powerful thing you can do is to get together and pray and allow your prayer to have an influence Ephesians 1 16 to 20 oh Lord we ask you to help us to see to help us to see, help us as we pray to really connect with that and see the exceeding greatness of your power working in our lives, working in our children's lives, working in our churches. And remember, as we begin to wind down right now, remember when Jesus prayed in Luke 3, the heavens opened. Praying will open the anointing of God to flow in our families, in our churches, begin to flow. You'll see prodigals coming home, backsliders being healed, the lost being saved as we begin to pray. Church, let me just say this to you. You know, we, had, we are so excited about it, you know. We had a lady that we know, and this just shows you how you don't give up on people. God doesn't give up on us, and we should never give up on people. This lady just walked into our service. She'd been with us years and years ago in our early days of ministry. And, um, you know, they ha she hadn't been to church for 28 years. She walked in a couple of Sundays ago to our morning service and everyone embraced her and loved on her. And my goodness, she's sitting in the front row last night in the healing meeting. She's bringing people into church. You can see that God has done something on her. And you know what? That tells you something. Don't give up on people because God doesn't. Stay with it till you see the breakthrough. Stay with it till you see the turnaround. I mean, goodness me, she is full of fire and God's done something. And it's so important that we don't give up on one another. So goodness, Father, thank you so much for, for it. I want to close tonight on this. You can tell a little bit, can't you, that I'm still full of last night, still excited, still expectant. I just love God, and I find it such an honor to come into his presence and pray. He's such a good God. He is he's such a loving God, and he never gives up on any of us. Don't you give up on anyone. Don't let the devil convince you that your prayer isn't working because it's a lie. It's having an effect in that child's life. God is working, but he's got to be working in different situations around the life. Look at this lady, 28 years, and she comes back to church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, let me say this as we, we close and begin to pray tonight. Andrew Murray said, there is a world with its needs entirely dependent. Listen to these words, please. There is a world with its needs entirely dependent on and needing to be helped by intercession. There is a, church, a God in heaven with a sufficient supply for all those needs waiting to be asked. There is a church with a wondrous calling and it sure promises waiting to be roused in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight and we give you all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus. We believe that each time that we pray, we believe, Father, that our prayer is effective and it's having an effect. We believe as we capture your thoughts through your word and we begin to speak forth that word, as we begin to pray in the spirit that your word and your spirit is having an effect in the situations, the circumstances around the people's lives that we pray 
pray for in Jesus name and we tell you tonight devil we rebuke you over our children we rebuke you over our families we rebuke you over our church and the Lord rebukes you in the name of Jesus he rebukes you over the churches he rebukes you over the pastors lives he rebukes you over our children and our grandchildren in the name of Jesus and father we thank you as we begin to pray heaven to the earth in our children's lives as we begin to pray heaven to the earth in our churches and over our pastors lives that something supernatural is happening for the glory of God in the name of Jesus oh we praise you tonight we give you glory tonight you said the effective fervent prayer of a person who knows their rights is making tremendous power available it's making a pathway it's making a highway for the glory of God in Jesus name oh hallelujah oh praise you Lord praise you Lord praise you Lord that even right now that you're touching prodigals you're touching prodigals and you're bringing them home for the glory of God you're touching the sons you're touching the daughters you're touching the grandsons you're touching the granddaughters and you're working in their hearts that their hearts are in your hands and you're turning you're turning you're turning their hearts in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. We pray for the reins of the Spirit to come on hearts that are hard and to soften those hearts, to touch those hearts in the name of Jesus. Prodigals, well, being stopped where they are, just like you stopped the Apostle Paul on that road, Father. And right now they're being stopped where they are and that there's going to be a supernatural turnaround in their hearts in Jesus' name. We thank you for it, Father. We praise you for it. We thank you for backsliders being healed and coming home in the name of Jesus. And that our churches are welcoming them home. Our churches are receiving them home in the name of Jesus. Just as if they'd always been there. We thank you for them, Father. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you for the lost being saved. We praise you for the sick being healed. We praise you for the dead being raised in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up our hands tonight and we thank you. We thank you for our children. We thank you for our grandchildren. We thank you for the prodigals. We thank you for the backsliders. We thank you for supernatural turnarounds. All glory. And Father, as we close tonight, we thank you for our churches. We thank you for churches. We thank you for pastors. We call blessings over the pastors. We call revelation to them. We call their eyes to see, their ears to hear, that where the devil has tried to blind them and tell them there's no hope, where the devil's tried to convince them, we rebuke the devil. Oh, yes. and we call light to their eyes we call a light to come to them father for hope in the midst of hopelessness and for supernatural turnarounds in the hearts of pastors and leaders and itinerants for supernatural turnarounds in our church houses in Jesus name that our houses are being built to receive the people in right now and we believe father that you are doing exceedingly abundantly far over and above all that we could ever ask or think according to the exceeding greatness of your power that is working in this hour in Jesus name
Oh, glory, Father, glory, Father. Glory, 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 glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Mutita Nama. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You said my house shall be called a house of prayer. Molikina Manuku, stir us up in our prayer lives. Oh, glory to God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today, joining us tonight. What a glorious encouragement from God's word for all of us tonight. Hallelujah. And we thank him. He's such a blessing. The Lord is so good, church, and his mercy endures forever. His eyes are on you. His ears are open to you. Glory to God. And we thank him right now that he's working in the midst of our prayers. He's working in the midst of that word we've released over the different situations and circumstances. Oh, Father, thank you that your glory, your splendor, and your majesty will be displayed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Will you have a wonderful evening tonight? Thank you so much for joining us at the Eagles. I just love it and I love praying with you. Pastor John and I love praying with you. We look forward to this every single week. And again, if you're in Melbourne, whoa, we've got two places you can join us. Raymond Doncaster at 10 a.m. and Raymond Mill Park at 6 p.m. And we're having wonderful services. And if not, if you're not in Melbourne, you can join us every week at 10 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube on Rayma Melbourne Online Church. Well, we pray God's blessing over you and we thank you again for joining us at the Eagles and remember that God loves you. And those who wait on the Lord They shall remain Strength, and they shall run.